Hey everybody, TJ from Blues here, and today I'm going to show you how to build a fully functional and customizable asset tracker in about 10 minutes. To build this yourself, you're going to need two pieces of hardware. The first is the Blues Wireless note card. Now, the note card is a small little system on module, it's about 30 by 35 millimeters, and its main job is to make cellular communication really, really easy which is going to be important for us today because we're going to be taking GPS readings and we need some way to get those readings up to the cloud to do something more interesting with them. And the note card is going to make our lives really easy for that. Second piece of hardware you need is a note carrier. The note carrier is a companion board for working with a note card, it makes it really easy to slot in a note card and to start communicating with it. And for our purposes, the note carrier also has onboard cellular and GPS antenna that are built into this thing. So essentially, we'll slot the note card in, uh, we'll use the note carrier to get GPS readings, and then through the note card, send those readings up to the cloud, we'll do some fun things with them, we'll build some interesting stuff, and I'll show you how you can do it as well. Links to both of those are in the description, so if you want to pick those up and follow along, that's where you can head. The pair is going to run you around $80, but the note card does come with 10 years of service and 500 megabytes of cellular data built in, which is a whole lot that will keep your asset tracking project running for a very long time. And there are also no subscription fees to worry about, uh, which is pretty uncommon for any sort of uh, sort of asset tracking type of solution. So I think that's pretty cool and means you can build an asset tracker for relatively cheap. And now that you know about the two pieces of hardware you need, let's look at how they work. The setup is really simple as the note card pretty easily slots into the note carrier through this M.2 edge connector. Once you have it slotted in, you'll want to attach this small screw with a screwdriver and then also attach these included UFL cables, which are gonna connect the note carrier's cellular and GPS antenna to the note card. Last, you'll wanna take a micro USB to USB-A cable and attach the micro USB end into the note carrier and then the USB end into your laptop or computer. And we'll look at what we're gonna do with that here in a minute. And with that, your hardware is actually all set. So after that, we're next going to have to configure the note card, which is a relatively simple two-step process. First, you need to sign up for a free NoteHub account at NoteHub.io. NoteHub is a secure backend that the note card knows how to communicate with out of the box. Once you have an account, you'll need to create a new project. We'll call ours Asset Tracker. Is that what that's what we're doing today? And once that's created, you'll need to copy this product UID, which is a unique identifier for your backend, as you'll need that in a minute. With NoteHub set up, your second task is to head to dev.blues.io, which is the Blues Developer Hub. Here, you can tap this Connect button, and if you have your note carrier connected through the USB cord that we looked at earlier, you can actually directly connect to your note card from a web browser, which I think is really cool. If you're new to the note card, I'd recommend going through this quick start tutorial as it'll teach you how the note card works and what you can do with it in quite a bit of detail. But today I'm going to give you the short version of that that'll help you set this thing up as an asset tracker. One really cool thing about using the note card is that its APIs are all JSON based and you can send those JSON requests through a note card CLI, through SDKs and a number of different programming languages, or you can even send those requests right here in your web browser. And there are actually only three requests that you need to make to set up your note card as an asset tracker. I'm going to enter all three requests here, and then they're also going to be in this video's description if you're looking for something that's a little bit easier to copy and paste. The first request is hub.set. Hub.set associates your note card with a note hub project. So if you remember that product UID that I copied earlier, now it's, now's the time to paste that back in for product. And outbound controls how often the note card should take any data that it has gathered and send that data up to NoteHub. This value is in minutes. So this configuration is essentially telling the note card to send data up to NoteHub every five minutes. The second command you need to run is card.location.mode. This request controls how often in seconds the note card should take GPS readings. So in this case, this request is saying to take a reading every 60 seconds or every one minute. Finally, the last request to run is card.location.track. This request, very simply, starts the location tracking process. So if I run this, that means I'm good to go. If you want to try getting a location from your desk, you can run a card.location request. At first, you'll see messages like this, 
is it'll likely take a few minutes for you to find GPS reception indoors. And you might even need to take your note carrier outside so that you have a clear view of the sky for better reception. The best way to test an asset tracker is to take it somewhere. So that's what I'm going to do for this video. Before I do that, though, one last note. The note card does require power, and there are a variety of ways you can provide it. One is through a USB connection, kind of like we've been using in this demo so far. If you're going to be deploying your asset tracker someplace where you can provide continuous USB power, that's one option you have for powering the note card. The other is to use a LiPo battery, which is what I often use. The note carrier has this little JST connector here that makes it easy to slot, uh, slot in a LiPo battery. Uh, these LiPo batteries are pretty cheap. Uh, they're pretty common. They're pretty easy to find. And actually, when you provide the note carrier with USB power, it'll also recharge this LiPo battery a given number of times as well. So you can get a couple different uses from this battery as well. Uh, I will note, if you're going to be using this someplace where this battery is going to be dangling around, uh, it's, it is a good idea to secure a LiPo battery. And you can even do something as simple as just taping it to the bottom of the note carrier for something quick and dirty before you take this thing out. But at this point, we're now good to go, so I'm going to head out for a drive. All right, I am back. I have some caffeine and I also have some GPS tracking data. So let's see what this looks like. Back in NoteHub, which remember is our cloud backend, you'll see that our note card is showing up now as a device on the sort of home screen of this NoteHub project. And if I go to my events list, I can see a list of all the events that the note card has reported. And there's a bunch of different stuff. Some are just metadata session, that sort of thing. The ones we're interested in are these track QO events, as those are the ones that map to an individual GPS reading. And if I go into the event, it's actually on this JSON tab, I can actually see the raw GPS coordinates, which is really cool. And at this point, I technically already have a fully functional asset tracker. I've set up hardware, I've configured it to take readings on a regular interval, and those readings are coming into a backend where I can view them. So I could call this done, but there is one last problem I want to solve. And that's because even though we are getting this data coming in, this GPS data, the numbers in and of themselves are kind of useless. I'm guessing the reason you want to gather data or track some sort of asset is more interesting than seeing them in sort of a spreadsheet like view on the web. What I really want to do is see this data on a map. To help you do that, NoteHub has a feature called routes, which lets you automatically route data that you collect in NoteHub to a bunch of different places around the web. That could be one of the big clouds like AWS or Azure. It could be an IoT protocol, something like MQTT, or you could just take all your data and send it to your own custom HTTP or HTTPS endpoint. Those are all options you have. I'm including links to our tutorials on routes. So if you're curious about learning about any of these options, you can check those out in the description. And for today's demo, I'm going to show you how to route data to a service I like using for asset tracking, and that's Datacake. Like NoteHub, Datacake has a pretty generous free tier and has a really nice integration with the note card that makes connecting the two as easy as making a handful of clicks. If you want to try it out for yourself, you'll need to create a new Datacake account, which you'll see that I've already done, then add a device. This is an API device in Datacake. You can create a new product from a template and choose the Blues Wireless note card template. Click Next. Next, Datacake is one, going to want a serial number for your device. And if we go back to NoteHub, the device UID that we already have here is going to work quite well. So I'm going to copy that, paste it in, and we'll just call this thing, well, we'll call it Asset Tracker to be consistent. Click Next. We'll go with the free plan for now and go ahead and add it. All right, and if I go into my newly created device, you'll see that Datacake already has sort of a, a pre-made scaffold dashboard that we can use. And so since we have this, our last step is to tell NoteHub how to send data to Datacake so that it ends up in these nice charts and widgets. To do that, I can head to Configuration, 
And if I scroll down, this HTTP endpoint is what I need. So I'll copy that. From there, I'll go back to Node Hub. I'm going to go to Routes, create a new route. We'll go with the general HTTP route. I'll call this thing data cake because that's what I'm using. Paste in that endpoint URL. And that's actually it. I'll create this new route. And now as GPS events come in from the note card and into Note Hub, Note Hub will automatically route that data to data cake so that we can view it on this really nice dashboard. To see that though, I need more data. So it's time to take one more trip. All right, I'm back again. I have sushi this time. I'm getting a lot of errands done from recording this video, but more importantly, I have a new set of data. So let's hop back into Data Cake and see what this looks like. Okay, let's look at Node Hub first in the events list because what I want to show is when I left, which is around 320, it looks like 323 here, you can see that I'm generating a track QO event every minute that the device is moving. If you'll remember earlier when we set card location.mode, we set it to every minute. So that's dictating uh, how often these track QOs are being captured, both when I'm heading to get my sushi, and then also a couple minutes later, you see one minute intervals returning as I'm heading back as well. And if I go into an individual, if I go into an individual event, I can go to the route log and Note Hub will show me whether it was able to route that data successfully, which you'll see that I got a 200 back from Data Cake indicating the data made it over there okay. And if I switch back over there and look at my dashboard, You'll see my trip, um, some of the metadata, the voltage uh, on the Note Hub and such, but more importantly, the map. And DataKick actually has this nice little slider. So you can see me leaving, heading down the street and heading back from those readings that were collected by my note card, sent up to Note Hub, and then routed over to DataKick so that I could see it on this map, which is all I think pretty cool. The note card and its APIs are a lot of fun to play with. And it's really quite amazing how you can build such a powerful asset tracking solution with a very simple setup. If you are interested in trying this out, make sure to check out the links in the description for the different hardware I use, links to get the note card and the note carrier, as well as links to guides and tutorials for you to set this up in a little bit more detail. I covered only the basics. There's a lot of additional APIs that are available, different ways you can tweak the note card to work in different ways and different scenarios to meet the needs of whatever it is you happen to be building. So give it a shot. And if you do run into any issues, feel free to let us know in our Blues forum, or you can let us know in the comments below and we can help you out and try to figure out what's up. Until next time, happy tracking.